everyone, Grayson here from Wild Sunny Farms, and today I'm going to be going through with you a demonstration of an incubator setup that I'm going to do in a method. And the original person who uploaded this and that I learned it from was JC's Bees, Jason Christman on YouTube. I'll leave a link to the video down in the description below. You can go check it out and see what you like about it and see and let me know what you think about the idea. Because I really like this idea and it's a real cool idea and it just makes it more easier for me at least. But some people just like to put them in a mating nuke. So I'm going to go through with you what I'm going to do with the incubator setup. And if you want to do the same, I suggest you go watch the video I learned this from. I'll leave it in the description below. So y'all, let's go ahead and get into it. Alright, we are over here where I leave all my equipment. So my storage area. I have some more places where I keep beekeeping equipment. Like I have these nukes, all these boxes everywhere where I keep in storage under this roof. So what I'm going to do today, like I said... I'm going to be showing you my incubator setup for queen rearing. Now, you can put your cells in a mini mating nuke and then it, the cell hatches and then it goes off to mate and then you have to leave it for two weeks, right? But if I'm going to be selling virgins, because sometimes I think virgins can be a better queen to get. Now why, before we get in, into any of this, why can virgin queens be better than mated queens? Well, of course, a virgin queen will cost less, but a virgin queen will also does have a little bit more of a chance to, to get accepted, right? Because she doesn't have all that maintenance in her, just a virgin queen. So it, she does have a little more chance of getting into the hive, being accepted more easily. It's not 100% to work, but a lot of times that's what we hear from other beekeepers, such as like Richard Knoll for queen rearing, because I was trying to study up on incubator setups and virgin queens and all this different these different things and that's one thing I found out not too long ago was that virgin queens can be one of the best queens especially if you're gonna be if I'm gonna be raising virgin queens to sell that's good also or if I have a hop I do not like a virgin queen will probably be better than trying to buy off a mated queen especially for meaner halves if you have a mean half like a russian you'll definitely want to figure out different ways to be able to get that mean half to accept a queen more easily because meaner bees can not accept that queen cell or that mated queen that you give the half then they just want to make their own queen cell right it's just kind of how everything goes sometimes virgins can be better so it just all has to play out in different things Overall, that's what I'm going to be doing, Virgin Queens. So, I was looking up also different ways to be able to hatch the cells, especially like in incubators, such as this one that we have here, like a styrofoam incubator. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the, them hatch in here because I've been looking on the internet, seeing what I can find. And what I have found on there is the same thing what I'm thinking. So, what I'll do is I'll put all my queen cells in here. Put my humidity in here, all the different stuff. Then I'll put the incubator on about 75, 74, 75 Fahrenheit, 34, 35 Celsius. So, let me show you the styrofoam incubator. Now, now as we all know, there's probably so many more expensive beekeeping incubators that can be so much more better and can, can work more easily for you. But if this thing will work, all I need is it to work. I don't care how bad it looks, it just needs to work, right? That's just what we need. So we, a while back, let me tell you a quick story. Whenever we were hatching chickens and stuff like that, we bought this incubator for hatching chickens and we hatched some in here. But ever since we got out of hatching chickens and any of that stuff, I never used this incubator after that. It was just put up in storage and I was thinking, because once I saw the video um, on JC's Bees, Jason Christman's video a while back, it was like three year, four years ago. Maybe I can find it. If I can find it, I'll maybe link it. But what he was saying was that you can hatch them in here. And I really like that idea. You know why? I can be more controlled over my cells. I know I can easily come in the incubator once they once they completely hatch i can pick them up or not the queen but the cage that i put them in that because i'll connect the cell to the cage and then right when they hatch 
they will be in the cage, right? So then they don't have to go out and kill any others. I don't have to be worried. I don't have to be sitting here on the 16th day looking at each queen to make sure they don't hatch. You know what I mean? So what that's going to do is I'll put them in here. But, when it, but we used to use this was a good incubator. It's a chicken incubator. But we can use that for this because I feel more controlled. So I can come in here, like I was saying, get the queen, look around on her, make sure there's nothing bad about her. So say if I'm going to mate her, put her in a mating nuke, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if the queen, once she comes right out of that cell, if maybe something bad happens. So once she hatches, I can look at her, tell if she's good or not. If she's bad, I'll throw her out. I may have to kill her. Maybe she's not a good one. Or if she's good, I can do a few things. I can put her in a mating nuke, I can sell her once she's out of the mating nuke, or I can just sell her as a virgin queen. Like I was saying, virgin sometimes can be better, it just all depends, right? Now, let me show you the incubator. Now, this incubator can get up to about 100-something degrees. It's been, I think the highest I've seen it was about 110 degrees, just a little over, just because we had it outside. And it does, It's this right here is a good incubator, and it's real cheap, but I mean, it's not that expensive. So, you don't need a m big, expensive one. Just get one from Tractor Supply, anywhere, any kind of chicken place, you can get you some kind of incubator. Better. Just make sure you can fit all of them in here. So that's where I'll probably get to something different. I've been in trying to look out for some different things. And I know this thing doesn't look good, but this is something I was working up. I had to make measurements. I took a frame, an old frame of mine, like a super frame, something like this, but smaller, right? I cut it down, took off the pieces, took it apart basically, cut it down, put it back together, and then it'll be able to fit in this thing right here. So what I'll do is you see, you don't have to have this little bar here. Now this is just some old scrap wood I had, so I'm going to make anything I have work. It doesn't have to be pretty, but I just want it to work for me. I need it to be able to do me something good, right? What I'll do is, see these little, right here? I'll put my cells all on the top here. But then after that, I'll put cages above them, right? And then after that, I can make final adjustments. I can do whatever I need. So I can't tell you for sure if that's what I'm going to do. Or I can do something different. I can, I, I'm going to, before I even raise queens, I'm going to take my cells, the cages, can make sure they can connect, make sure it works okay, right? Because we want to make sure it works. If not, then I have to make up a new design for this. So this is just some kind of old frame that I had. It was just no good. So I just made it work for the, the setup. So but I just want to show you that because I have showed you what I'm going to do. One thing I do want to tell you is that one thing I can't guarantee is what methods I'm going to use. Now this one, I'm pretty sure I'm going to use it. But for like the starter alone, finisher alone, or the starter slash finisher, it just depends on what works for me at that moment. So at least I'll be able to take you through it and you'll be able to see my changes, whatever I'm going to do. But I think I'm going to do the starter finisher. So y'all stay tuned. I'm not going to tell you for sure what I'm going to use. But that's the queen wearing plan. And I just ordered some more stuff. I did a little big order. I still have a few more things to order. Just like some queen excluders. Some different queen grafting tools. And that, that's about it. So this is the incubator. Just some incubator that we have around. And it works good. You can also, you know, put some humidity in here if you need any humidity. You know, that kind of thing to keep the, you know, little cells in there. But that's what I'm going to do. And I will link a video if you don't know about this trick about, you know, hatching cells in, in the incubator. I'll try to link it down below if I can find it again, but which I, I should I should be able to find it again. I'll link it down in the, the video description. You go watch it and you'll probably get a better idea because I'm not going to... I don't, I'm still learning on it, but that's what I can tell from what I know. On Jason Christman's YouTube channel, a video, I'll link it in the description. Go find it and, you know, that'll be good. Something good to research on. And I think that's a good method because I feel like I'll be more controlled over it, right? I know if she's bad, is she good? Is the cell bad? Does she have a problem? Is she, you know, just that kind of thing. So... Like I was saying, if you have one in the mating nuke, you don't know what's going to happen once she hatches. But you know once she hatches in there, you can all you got to do is take this lid off, look at her. She looks good to go. Put her in some uh, tricks for her from that longer cage. Put her in like a mini little mate cage or some kind of queen cage and you can put her wherever you want. You can put her in a hive that you want to requeen and sell her. Sell her locally, maybe even give it to a friend of yours that you do not need. You just want to give it to a friend. Either way, you can do so many things with queens. What am I, I going to do with it? I'm going to raise some queens. So what I'm going to do is 
I'm gonna split my halves, my Russian halves, I'm gonna split them, take the queen out, put them in a mating nuke, all the little splits, that's the five frame nukes, and then I'll put the Italian queens in there. Because then once I have the Italian queen in there, I can have a starter half and a finisher and have more Italian that I like. Like that blue um, half, last time you saw it, it is just exploding with bees. There's more bees on the way. There's a lot of brood, so much stuff. You know, I haven't checked for any mites yet, but last time I checked was about six mites. But um, I have Avivar in there, so it's going to be pretty soon, and like probably a week or two when I'm going to remove them. So I'll have to remove the Avivar, and then after that, I'll, you know, be done with treatments. Because I'm not really worried with two, like with my Russian halves, because they have been doing good without treatments. So, no, it's really interesting. We were able to learn a little about the incubator setup. Um, and it was, it's a real good idea. I really do like it. And I appreciate everyone for supporting the channel. And check this out. We are around, let's say, about 450 subscribers. And we are approaching nearly 500 subscribers. So if y'all would do me a favor, to share and tell anybody that you know, possibly friends at your bee clubs or maybe even another beekeeper who may be interested, please let them know that I have a channel and you know, share, and like, and maybe even tell them to subscribe. That helps me a lot. It has to support the channel to reach the 500 subscribers, maybe by the end of the month or maybe by the end of March. This will be a real good goal. Um, it's real cool um, in the last three months. So I appreciate everyone supporting. Please um, consider to click the like button if you enjoyed, if you find some kind of info, maybe something that you can use for your own bee apiary. But I do suggest you go watch Jason Christman's video on that. It's a real good one. And I really like the idea, so y'all thanks for watching. We'll catch you on our next video. Take care.